magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping make the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello, witches, wizards, and those who have forgotten about their Hogwarts letters, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen. It's been a while since I was last able to say that, but I'm here with a brand new recipe. For those of you who are new or just don't remember what we're doing here, my name is Bradley and I am baking my way through the Harry Potter books, creating magical recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last year's recipe, where we created a Hogwarts house inspired salad, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you are new and you want to see more from the kitchen, make sure you like this video, hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. And there will be next week and the week after that, no more breaks until we finish this book. Okay, you've definitely waited long enough for this recipe, so let's fire up that cauldron and bake some magic. Our next recipe can be found in chapter 8 of The Prisoner of Azkaban, Flight of the Fat Lady, where we see the golden snitch, a tiny winged walnut sized ball. Now this is one recipe I can't wait to catch. Our first recipe back is for walnuts and this sentence is actually pretty great at describing and inspiring our next recipe. The walnuts are being used to describe golden snitches, so I decided to conjure up golden snitch cake pops and use walnuts as the cake base. Now, walnuts go amazingly well in a variety of cakes, but I've gone for walnut and chocolate chip, and then we'll also infuse some butterbeer flavours into there because it's the wizarding world. First things first, we need to create our sponge cake base, so this is what you need to do. To begin, I'm going to grease and line my baking tin to help prevent the cake from sticking. I'm going to start with our main ingredient, which is the walnuts. So I've poured them onto my chopping board and then coarsely chopped them into rough chunks. I'm also using this time to crack and whisk my eggs until nice and smooth. For the cake batter, I'm starting by creaming together my butter and sugar until light and fluffy. Once that's ready, you want to add in your eggs a little bit at a time using flour to prevent it from curdling. Repeat this step until all of your eggs have been combined. Next, it's time to add in the rest of your flour along with your flavourings. That's ground mixed spice, vanilla, your chopped walnuts and chocolate chips. Continue mixing for a few seconds, but be careful not to overbeat the mixture, otherwise it will become tough. I like to finish mine off by scraping down the bottom of the bowl and finishing by hand. The last thing you need to do is transfer your cake batter into your baking tin and then use an offset spatula to smooth over the top. Bake the cake in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for around 20 minutes until golden and you'll know it's ready when you insert a skewer into the center and it comes out clean. While the cake is in the oven, you can save some time by getting started on the decorations. I'm going to bind the cake pops with a butterbeer inspired icing made from homemade buttercream and some caramel in there as well. I'm also going to melt and pipe my white candy melts because we'll be using these for the wings later and I want to make sure they have enough time to set so they're nice and firm when we stick them on. For the butterbeer icing, you want to start off with the buttercream base, which I've made by whisking together my butter until smooth. You then want to add in your icing sugar a little bit at a time, continuing to whisk until it's well incorporated. By the final addition, you should notice that your icing is light and fluffy and all of the icing sugar particles have dissolved. Once you're at that stage, you can then flavour your icing with some milk and your butterscotch or caramel sauce. Set the icing to one side while you prepare your wings. I've made mine from white candy melts as they'll be nice and strong and hold their shape when we attach them onto our golden snitch. Melt your candy melts in the microwave, stirring every 10 to 20 seconds. And then once nice and smooth, you can pour that into a piping bag with a writing tip. I've traced some wings onto the back of some parchment paper and then piped the white candy melts on top. The easiest way to do this was to trace around the edge and then fill in the middle. 
You don't want this to be too thick, otherwise your wings will be too heavy and fall off, but also if it's too thin then they will just snap, so you want to find a happy medium. To give them an added touch of magic, I've also got some silver luster dust which I've sprinkled on top. Pop these into the fridge to set until you're ready to assemble. Okay, now that all of our components are ready, it's time to assemble the cake pop. And this is actually the trickiest part of the recipe because depending on how fresh or stale the cake is, it's gonna have a different texture and absorb different amounts of moisture. So you need to tailor the amount of buttercream to make sure you get the right consistency. If it's too soft, it won't hold its shape, but if you add too little, it will be too dry and then it will just fall off the stick. So you need to keep an eye out and look for that right moment. It does take a bit of practice to know what you're looking for, but I'm gonna share a few quick and easy tips so you can get it right every time. To create the cake pop, you want to remove the cake from the pan and then work it into breadcrumbs using your fingertips. Break it apart and then keep on going until it's nice and crumbled. Once you have an even consistency, add in a generous tablespoon of the buttercream icing and then stir that through. I like to start off with a spatula and then once it's a little less messy, switch to my hands. You'll notice that the cake looks pale and white on the outside but it's still dry in the middle, so don't add any more icing at this stage, just keep on working it until you have a nice even colour. When it's ready, you'll be able to work it into a smooth ball that has a slightly shiny outside. When you break it in half, it should come apart cleanly, but if you press it with your fingers, then it should crumble out in clumps. If the mixture doesn't hold its shape at this stage, you've added too much buttercream and it needs more cake. If it crumbles straight away as soon as you break it, then it's too dry and needs more icing. When you're happy with the consistency, split the mixture into six or seven balls and then roll them in the palm of your hand until smooth and round. Place these into the fridge to firm up while we prepare our candy melts. You want to melt these down just like the white candy melt and then we're going to use them as a glue to help our stick stay in place. Dip them in until they're well coated and then press into the middle of the round cake pops. You can place these onto a board while you finish off the rest of your balls and then return them to the fridge or preferably the freezer for 30 minutes. Our final step is to decorate the cake pops and transform them into our golden snitches. Now usually for cake pops I'd recommend dipping them in chocolate as you get the best flavour, but then I found these toffee flavoured candy melts, which are great for three reasons. So toffee flavours are really going to complement the butter bit elements that we were going for in this recipe. The colour is going to act as the perfect base for our gold, which we'll add on later. And being made of candy melts, they are firmer than chocolate, which is really going to help give us a nice sturdy shell for us to stick our wings on at the end. For the decorations, I'm pouring the toffee candy melts into a tall glass and then melting them in the microwave, stirring as I go. Candy melts can sometimes be a little too thick for dipping, so you can use coconut oil to help give it a more pourable consistency. Once it's ready, dip the cake pops into the middle until they're fully submerged. Remove them once they're nicely coated and then twirl them to help any excess candy melts drip down. The beauty of freezing them is that it will dry very quickly and leave you with a nice thin outer shell so it doesn't run down to the stick. I'm pressing mine into some styrofoam to hold them up as they set and then moving on to the rest of my batch. For the final touches, I've got myself some edible gold spray paint, which I've used to cover each of the cake pops. You can see that one of mine has cracked and that was from the cold of the paint hitting that candy melt. So be careful not to apply too much too quickly. Once the gold paint has dried, you can place a little more of your white candy melts onto the back of each wing and then stick those to the side of your cake pops. This is also a great opportunity to cover up any of those inconsistencies, so if you've cracked one of your shells like mine, just use a little clever placement and cover it up. That is game, set, and match. So there you have it, our golden snitch cake pops are ready to fly. Walnut and chocolate chip cake beautifully blended with a butter beer icing all wrapped up in a golden snitch shell. I really, really enjoy bringing this recipe, so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you give it a go, let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you want to see more from the kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. And make sure you like this video as it really helps new witches and wizards discover the kitchen. 
I really appreciate all of the love and support and patience that you had while I was recharging and on a break. But I'm back and so, so excited to bring you more from this series. In the meantime, I'm off for Quidditch practice, but I'll see you next week. <laughs>